All right. Hey, everyone, and welcome to today's deep dive. Mm -hmm. We're talking organic vineyards. Yeah. Um, and we're going to be looking at mm. uh, a blog and YouTube channel uh, by the folks at Barn Villa. Yeah. Great choice. So they're documenting their first year mm -hmm. starting their own vineyard. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a good one. And uh, we're going to yeah. try to get as many uh, yeah. practical tips out of this. Mm -hmm. for you mm -hmm. as we can and maybe some workarounds and yeah. you know all that good stuff absolutely so you can mm -hmm. get your organic vineyard off yeah of that. it's a really what i think is cool about uh barn de villa is they're really transparent about mm. both the things that work yeah and importantly like the things that go wrong yeah so it makes it really relatable for yeah. people especially like for year one yeah you know nobody yeah. really expects mm. everything to go right that first year right yeah exactly so right off the bat they jump into vineyard layout mm -hmm. you know they they're uh they followed that traditional like north south row orientation mm -hmm. it's a classic to you know maximize that sunlight sure um but what they did that i thought was interesting is they spaced their vines four feet apart right yeah which seems a little counterintuitive you know most vineyards they're trying to cram as many vines in as they can you would think right you would think like use all the space exactly yeah but there's a reason behind that right well yeah i mean especially if you're in a more humid climate um you don't want things to be too tight mm -hmm. you need that airflow right? right so if you've got the vines packed in really tight you know no air circulation that's just a recipe for fungal disease right um so they spaced them out give it plenty of air let things dry out a bit right and really reduces that that risk yeah which is i mean for organic growing like you said prevention is key it's so much better to prevent it in the first place yeah. than to try to combat it once it's taken hold and they talk about how they have pretty high humidity yeah where they are mm -hmm. so that extra space is probably going to be yeah. really key for them big time so um, mm -hmm. let's talk about their soil because that's the next thing yep. they uh, they mentioned. Mm -hmm. So they've got heavy clay soil. Yeah, that's pretty tough stuff. Which I always thought was not good for grapes. <laughs> You'd think it'd be a deal breaker, right? Yeah, exactly. But they came up with a really cool solution. Yeah. They did this lasagna soil amendment thing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of wild. It's pretty wild. Layers, mm -hmm. wood chips, biochar, mm -hmm. rock minerals gypsum pro mix like an actual lasagna pretty much it's like they're building a delicious mm -hmm. underground lasagna for their vines so let's break it down all right so first up you got the wood chips the foundation this is the back to eden method they're kind of mimicking a forest floor right and they break down slowly mm -hmm. release nutrients over time mm -hmm. then you got biochar which is like mm -hmm. i think of it as a sponge mm-hmm Holds water, mm -hmm. and it's also like a condo for microbes, all those good guys. Oh, yeah. And then rock minerals, mm -hmm. add those essential nutrients, can't forget those. Right. Then there's gypsum, mm -hmm. which helps break down that heavy clay, right. improves drainage, because you don't want things waterlogged. Right. And finally, ProMix, mm -hmm. which has all sorts of goodies, like vermiculite, mm -hmm. mycorrhizae, fungi, stuff that really helps the roots thrive. So it's like they're giving their vines yeah. a five-course meal. Basically, yeah. So this lasagna method, it's like a template, right? Mm -hmm. You can kind of adapt it. Absolutely. Based on what your soil is like. Yeah, so if you've got sandy soil, you might not need the gypsum. Right. You know, you might swap something else in. It's all about understanding the principles yeah. and then adapting mm -hmm. to your situation. So this next thing they did is uh, yeah. a little interesting. This one's, this one's fun. So they added thousands of worms yeah. to the vineyard worms yeah. i'll admit when i first saw that i was like yeah Ew. it's not the most glamorous thing no but, but yeah. they actually go into the science yeah so i'm like okay maybe there's a reason <laughs> yeah there's a method to the madness i can get behind this so vermiculture that's what it's called mm -hmm. adding yeah. worms and it's amazing for the soil okay so basically they eat all that organic matter the wood chips, you know, mm -hmm. and what they leave behind. Mm -hmm. Those castings, that's like mm -hmm. pure gold. Yeah. It's basically worm poop, but don't let that scare you. Right. It's amazing fertilizer. Right. They're aerating the soil. They're improving drainage. It's just. So they're really taking care of the soil mm -hmm. from the bottom up, literally. Yeah, they're doing it right. So 
for the listener, right? Like adding worms is an investment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. It takes time. Much. But in the long run, mm -hmm. healthier soil, yeah. healthier vines, better grapes. It's all connected. Absolutely. So speaking of challenges. Oh, yeah. Because it's not all sunshine and roses, right? Vineyard life. It's not always easy. They did not sugarcoat their deer problem. No, they kept it real. They shared a story mm -hmm. about finding their vines just decimated oh, overnight. And it was just like. Heartbreak. You could just feel the disappointment and frustration in yeah. their voices. Yeah, all that hard work. Gone. They went with a Highline electric fence mm -hmm. powered by a solar charger. Yep. Smart move. And they called it a game changer. It usually is. And they even have a review mm -hmm. of that solar charger on their website. I thought that was cool. Yeah, that's helpful. Um, But they're already mm -hmm. thinking about the future. Yeah. So as the vineyard grows. Yeah. They're like, okay, this might not be enough. Right. So they're already researching yeah. more permanent, more robust solutions. Long-term planning. That's key. So oh. they mentioned they'll be sharing more about that. Yeah. They said they're going to do some- Future videos. Future videos. Mm -hmm. So that's something to look forward to. Yeah, definitely. Um, but it was a good reminder of, you know- Scalability. Yeah, scalability, like what works. What works for a small plot. When you've got yeah. like 10 vines. Yeah. It's not necessarily going to work. <laughs> not going to cut it. When you've got, you know- Acres and acres. Acres. Yeah. So they got pretty real. They did. About why they decided to go organic. You know, I appreciate that honesty. Oh, so is... their main motivation. Yeah. They love grapes. They eat a lot of grapes. Mm. They have kids. Yeah. They want to avoid those harmful chemicals. Yeah. Makes sense. So, you know, it's that classic. Like who wouldn't want fresh chemical free grapes? Yeah, exactly. Like you grew them yourself. Right from your backyard. Like why not? It's a great motivator. So it really ties into that larger picture, right? right. Of, Sustainability. Yeah. Environmental impact. I mm -hmm. mean, some people say mm -hmm. organic even tastes better. Mm -hmm. So. Who knows? Could be. Maybe. We'll have to try some. We'll have to do a taste test. But it's great that they're, you know, not just sharing yeah. their journey, mm -hmm. but also. Inspiring others. Yeah. Inspiring other people to think about mm -hmm. where their food comes from, you yeah. know. Yeah. The choices we make. And all of that. Mm-hmm. So speaking of inspiration, mm -hmm. they're planning to expand. Oh, wow. They mentioned. That's ambitious. Maybe even getting a second property mm -hmm. dedicated to winemaking. Wow. Um, and then they also said they might even get into beekeeping. So honey and mead. It's like they're building a whole. I know. Little empire. Organic empire. It's amazing. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, that might be mm -hmm. something to think about for uh, our listeners, right? Like, yeah. what does your ideal vineyard look like? Mm -hmm. Are mm -hmm. you thinking small? You know, a few vines. Just a hobby? Yeah. Or are you thinking big? Are you thinking big? Like yeah. full on winery? Yeah, winemaking, you know, mm -hmm. the whole nine yards. Yeah. It's about figuring out mm -hmm. what success looks like for you. Absolutely. And then mapping out yeah. your journey. I love that. So, from what we've seen mm -hmm. from Barn de Villa, mm -hmm. it's clear that with a bit of planning mm -hmm. and some ingenuity. Yeah. You know, and a whole lot of passion. A whole lot of passion. You can really <laughs> turn your vineyard dreams. Into reality. Into a reality. Inspiring. It really is inspiring. So, um, we didn't get to talk a whole lot about choosing grape varietals. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. So, I think that's a good... We'll have to save that for next time. Yeah, we'll save that for next time. Mm -hmm. We'll be back in a jiffy to explore this very important aspect mm -hmm. of vineyard success. It's a crucial one. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. So welcome back to our deep dive into organic vineyards. Mm -hmm. We're still hanging out with the folks from Barn de Villa, soaking up all their wisdom. I mean, they really emphasize that flexibility, that adaptability, mm -hmm. which is honestly so important when you're starting out, right? Oh, yeah. Like for any new vineyard owner. Absolutely. You're going to run into unexpected challenges. Oh, for sure. And you got to be able to roll with it. Exactly. Like they... those deer. Oh, yeah. Those pesky. Finding their vines just decimated. I still can't get over that. Talk about a setback. Yeah, it shows you got to be prepared. Yeah, protection is key. Right from the start. So they went with the electric fence. Mm -hmm. right? The high line. Which worked well initially. For the time being. But now they're thinking long term. As they should. They're like, okay, we're going to need something more permanent. Something more robust. As the vineyard grows. That's smart thinking. So it's like a reminder for anyone listening, right? Mm -hmm. A simple electric fence. 
might be fine for a small plot. When you're just starting out. Exactly. But as you expand. Think bigger. You're going to need something that can scale with you. Maybe a high tensile wire fence mm -hmm. or even a living fence. Oh, that's an interesting idea. You know, like a hedge. Right. Something natural. That could be really cool. Provides a barrier, mm -hmm. but also adds to the aesthetic. I like it. So, yeah, think about your vision mm -hmm. for your vineyard and plan accordingly. Speaking of vision, mm -hmm. their whole reason for going organic it was pretty inspiring. Oh, definitely. And they just love grapes. Oh, they're big fans. And they want their family to enjoy... Yeah, the good stuff. The purest, chemical-free grapes. Fresh off the vine. I mean, who doesn't want that? Right. That's the dream. It's like that peace of mind, mm -hmm. knowing exactly what's going into your body. And your family's body. Especially if you have kids. Absolutely. So it was not just about the grapes themselves. It's about a bigger picture. Yeah, like a whole philosophy. Sustainability. Mm -hmm. Environmental impact. And some people say oh, yeah. the taste is even better. They might be right. We'll have to see. We'll have to try some ourselves. So they're creating this whole ecosystem out there hmm. of goodness. And remember they're adding beekeeping? Oh, yeah. The bees. Another layer of sustainability mm -hmm. and diversity. So it's not just about the grapes. Right. It's about creating this thriving system mm -hmm. that benefits the environment. And produces delicious, healthy food. Imagine harvesting your own honey oh, wow. from bees that are living amongst your grapevines. That's the life. They're really taking organic to a whole new level. They are. It's like a conscious lifestyle choice. It's not just a farming method. Exactly. It's a way of life. And they're so passionate about it. Mm -hmm. It's contagious. Mm. It makes you want to jump in and start big. Get your hands dirty. Yeah. Grow something yourself. It's empowering. And remember, mm. they're not stopping there. Oh, no. They're expanding ambitious maybe even adding a second property we're winemaking winemaking plus the beehives the honey the mead it's like they're building this organic empire i know it's pretty awesome it's incredible so it's a testament to their passion yeah and their belief in the power of organic practices you don't have to choose mm -hmm. between passion and success right you can do both and they're proving it they are so while we're on the topic of possibilities mm -hmm. Let's shift gears a little bit. Okay. And talk about something Barn de Villa didn't really get into too much. Yeah, that's right. Choosing the right grape varietals. Ah, yes, the heart of the vineyard. The stars of the show. This is where it gets fun. We'll be back in a moment mm -hmm. to explore this fascinating world. Of grape varietals. And help you choose the perfect grapes. For your unique vineyard. So don't go anywhere. And we're back, ready to dive into the world of grape varietals. Yeah, this is where it gets really exciting. It does. It's like the heart of the vineyard, right? Absolutely. Choosing the right grapes mm -hmm. is crucial for success. Now, Barnavilla, they didn't really get into specifics too much. Right. They're still experimenting. It seems like they're still figuring out mm -hmm. what works best for them. Which makes sense. You know, year one. Yeah. You got to kind of see what takes. Well, yeah. you don't want to plant a whole vineyard right. and then realize, oops, wrong grape. Exactly. So where do we even begin with this? <laughs> well, uh, let's start with the basics, like your climate. Okay, climate. Imagine you're standing on your future vineyard site. Mm. Feel the sun on your face. Is it hot and dry? Mm. Or is it cool and crisp? That's a good way to put it. That's yeah, your first clue, right? Right. Some grapes love the heat. Mm -hmm. They're like sunbathers. Exactly. While others... They need a little shade prefer a bit more of a a gentle climate. Right, so it's about matching the grape to the climate. Absolutely. You wouldn't plant a delicate, cool climate grape right. in a scorching desert. It would shrivel up. Exactly. It's about working with nature. Okay, climate. Got it. Mm -hmm. What about soil? Does soil type matter as much? Oh, absolutely. Soil is like the foundation of your vineyard. Mm -hmm. Some grapes thrive in well-drained, sandy soil. Mm -hmm. Others can handle heavier clay, like our friends at Barn de Villa. Right, the lasagna master. Exactly. So get to know your soil. Get your hands dirty. Literally figure out what you're working with. So it's like a matching game then. It is. You're matching the grapes' needs mm -hmm. to what your land offers. And hopefully you find that perfect match. That's the goal. Maybe even discover a hidden gem. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Yeah, a grape that thrives in your unique little microclimate. A superstar varietal. I like it. That's the magic of viticulture. It is. So for our listeners who are ready to start picking their grapes, mm -hmm. where do they even begin? I'd say start local. 
Okay, local. Talk to nurseries, vineyards in your area. Mm -hmm. They're a wealth of knowledge. Right, they know it grows well. They've been there, done that. They've made the mistakes, so you don't have to. Exactly. And don't forget about online resources. Oh, yeah, the internet. Tons of websites dedicated to grape growing. Mm -hmm. Information on varietals, mm. climate suitability. And disease resistance. Right? Oh, that's a big one, especially oh. for organic growers. Mm -hmm. You want grapes that can resist those pesky diseases. Without needing a ton of intervention. Oh, exactly. It's all about working with nature. Mm. Choosing the right grapes is a huge part of that. Wow. So it's not just about picking something that sounds tasty. No, there's a lot more to it. It's about understanding the science, the art. And the long-term implications. It's a whole process. It is, but it's a rewarding one. It definitely sounds like it. Take your time, do your research, maybe even experiment a little. See what works for you. Exactly. Well, this has been an incredible deep dive. It has. Into the world of organic vineyards. Thanks to Barn de Villa. They really inspired us. They did. To learn more about this fascinating world. From soil prep to pest control to mm -hmm. choosing the right grapes. We covered it all. We did. So hopefully our listeners are feeling empowered, mm -hmm. ready to embark on their own grape growing adventures. I hope so. It's all about passion, dedication. And a willingness to learn. And who knows, maybe someday mm -hmm. we'll be featuring your vineyard story. That would be awesome. Here on The Deep Dive. Keep those dreams growing. So until next time. Happy growing, everyone. Happy 